the first scene in the new Wolverine film starts with a camera, you know, craning down on a crane through the trees, or a drone, doesn't matter, depending upon whether you want to sound engineer overly or not. And it just comes down all the way until it meets Wolverine's face, and he's sitting outside or indoors with a window open, you know, and there's a lot of golden sunlight coming in, and he's on a cocaine plantation. Well, what's with the light? Uh, that also grows um, avocados, and he's eating fresh avocado dip, you know, in like big old huge amounts on a uh, on a chip, you know, and he takes a big old bite and sips his refreshing like you know whatever it is some sort of herbal tea now the thought was here to point out the difference between regular cocaine leaves and a form of terrible cannibalism which sometimes would happen in South America where people would try to eat each other's bones it causes terrible illness and death of course um, and so they, villagers that grow uh, avocados on the sides of the mountains also grow cocaine because it's an excellent source of nutrition and health and vitality when chewed or brewed into a tea. And so um, it's, uh, you just filmed the movie we did. The, the idea was to film it in, um, you know, Peru, wherever, somewhere in South America like that, where, you know, it's sold in toothpaste and mouthwash regularly. You can buy the leaves from uh, street cart vendors on the sides of the road and go out and see their fields. So it was just an easy opportunity for Daniel Radcliffe to use uh, natural cocaine and prove that it's very healthy and that it can be used to bodybuild in a safe and natural way by increasing blood flow along with stretching and lots of uh, you know physical activity and uh, a healthy diet so that's that was really impressive and uh, I don't know so cannibals attack the peaceful village after whatever he establishes that he's lived there for a decent time and that he knows the people and he's friendly with all of them and uh, after, you know, the terrible kidnapping and the, uh, you know, he assumes most of them are going to be killed and slaughtered. It's a very gruesome movie. Um, you know, of course, rated R. They, he tries to defend and is attacked. He's very viciously, uh, you know, beaten. And um, he's healed by a very old Wanda that's, you know, in the... South American area because you know it's the multiverse of madness so it's long into the future of this timeline and uh, she's now an old witch still beautiful but but you know old of course and uh, she heals him because he's grown you know these bone abnormalities from exposure to a certain parasite in the swamps that he comes across that's makes his bones grow like wolverine claws and due to his superhuman ability which would be his wolverine ability in this story he's capable of uh healing from it but when he gets angry they press out of his skin you know through his knuckles and uh they're shattered in the fight so Wanda has to coat them in magical silver and platinum so that they can heal and be pressed together like magnetically into, you know, claw blades. And, you know, of course, it's terribly painful, the process. And when they heal, they, they you know, they think he's dead. They're laying him down to rest with a traditional South American way. His eyes open, you know, because his hands are caked in blood and there's the shiny claws and they retract back into his body as he, you know, screams in pain. And, you know, his body starts to heal. And she, you know, uses all sorts of magical herbs and spices and stuff from different planets on him, I guess. That was the idea. So then he seeks revenge on the people that have been kidnapped and learns of their uh, gruesome fate, which is... 
so some of them have been killed and uh, they try to harvest the cocaine aluminum from their bones, the minerals, extract them with gasoline and other toxic caustic materials and uh, consume that and he rips them to pieces. Okay, so I had to leave the room. Uh, he described the movie Wolverine for Daniel Radcliffe and so then I was like, well, he said he didn't describe the suit. Well, it's like a rubber suit. I had a Kong ball back in the day that I would uh, enforce justice with, let's say, and a lot of them. It's a rubber from some South American tree. The Think about it this way, like... You know that insulation foam you use, it puffs up? Imagine that's rubber, but thick. And like, you know how his original suit's all kind of strangely yellow and it's got like points where there's like extra stuff? Those are rubber seams that are like thicker and kind of gushier whilst all being solid. So like, it's a rubber suit, so like when his claws come through it, you know... It punctures through that rubber how it would, and then when it retracts, it's like the rubber heals and there's no holes at all how it will. I don't know. It's just that certain effect. Any rubber just does that. Yeah, it's the suit of their legendary warriors that yeah. they, you know, once you was able to tame the parasite that's trapped deep in the jungles in some valley. Yeah, exactly. And so they, you know, wear that suit because it, you know, the heals when the, the claws go through it. So then it explains, I just love, I just love superhero suits, origin stories, more than even the people that are in them, usually. And so, um, Sandra Bullock realizes that, I'm just kidding, okay, that's, that's a rude joke, okay. <laughs> but, um, it's just so nice to have a explanation for a suit, because it's so stupid looking, but when you have that explanation, everyone just snaps to, it doesn't matter that it's stupid, it's traditional, you know? That's just how it works, so. Yeah, so then the giant Wolverine, like, you know, things that yeah. stick out just seem to make a logical amount of sense instead mm -hmm. of being sillier. And we can finally get him into that, that yeah. bumblebee sort of colored suit that people have seen before. And mm -hmm. the reason we do it is because the whole jungle, same with the multiverse of madness, is black light like deep yeah. blue purple their teeth glow in the scenes his, mm -hmm. his you know claws are all shiny and covered in fluorescing silver for real and, and like, if you look at the light. original comics it was that type of lsd heavy metal type look yeah so he's just a rock star in the jungle you know yeah what I mean? and that's what daniel radcliffe is you know gonna deliver mm-hmm I just really wish i could slip a scene in there you know off of my 4k camera where I'm like some villager who just is looking amazed at him or something. Or no, what I'd really want to do if I could actually, of course, be there in person is be some villager who's the tough warrior who gets the crap beaten out of by him because he's so cool, you know. Because <laughs> when someone's smaller than me and, like, they do stunts all over me and I pretend I'm thrown around, I'm better than, you know, your average stunt wrestler, you know. I think I'm pretty good, so... I'm pretty good at get throwing. <laughs> I'm pretty good at get getting thrown around, and yeah. that's about it. Well, he's pretty light, so yeah. we've done a lot of scenes. You'll see someday where I throw him around like a, you know, he's a ninja, and I'm taking him down. It's stupid crap. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Man, I would just wish I could be the lucky guy to work the giant ultraviolet overhead lights that make it fluoresce different ways for people's teeth and stuff as they yeah. run around with like bright bright shiny camo not not like <laughs> uh, like this but of course military patterns but intentionally everything's fluorescent and, and very bright and entertaining show off way. the really deep jungle areas how they're like underwater deep sea trenches and people need to realize the reason why no one goes there it's not the temperature necessarily it's the actual density and types of gases and the humidity, and humidity overall. overall and the plants putting off smells they just fall over dead they just can't handle it their immune systems are pretty compromised already yeah i mean it's true a lot of biota in the jungle most people have allergies already that'll just you know <laughs> ko yep i just feel good though i need a vacation
All right, here's the stuff the witch healing uh, him of the parasites would say, isn't it? Gorgon balsam, uh, golden seal, slippery elm. Uh, I don't know the names of all the Healy jungle trees they use down there. So anyone can just research the names of the slimy stuff that'll look good on camera of some jungle tree and add that in, you know? I guess that's about it. Two more uh, to add. Uh, Copal resin and dragon's blood resin. Those two are really good, too. They look really good on camera, especially. The dragon's blood, oh yeah, that's what we're looking for, for those camera looks. Maybe some oak moss. Oh god, yeah, oak moss. That stuff is uh, the most insanely... Well, I mean, it's deadly if you have skull malformations that are too severe. It is a living moss. It comes so, right out of the bottle. I'm not quite sure whether Daniel Radcliffe's body would be good for that, but... Well, if he wants to actually turn into a buff, insane, man, midget, you know, wrestler dude, then he could do that. I mean, I don't know what his dedication level is to touching that stuff even, or smelling it. The spores will, like, enter you and take you over, man. It's, it's strong. Yeah. I don't know. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Here's what I originally said. He didn't quite remember this. It's this concept that, like, you know how in the other Wolverine movie, he's actually forged with heat, heated metal into him, and supposedly he's dead, and then he regenerates anyway, atomically, back into being alive as Wolverine, as Hugh Jackman. You know, it was cool looking, but what if in this other thing, he's trying to survive the parasites, so they mix these herbs with rubber from the rubber tree... And then they put it into the cracks in them where the parasites are, you know, injected in there with their rods or whatever. And then they put, like, hot metal that's, like, healing, that's precious and mixed with whatever other metals. And that forms the claws. That was my idea. Just make it really grotesque because Daniel Radcliffe loves that. So that was the full extent of it. I know it's a little cliche, but I mean, Wolverine already had the backstory, so we thought we'd stick with it, that he's, you know, gone to Vietnam, he's been in other wars, he's pretty old. But not that old. Not Why that old. We need to make him infinitely old. Yeah, but, but I like a Vietnam backstory because it's, it's yeah. horrific, and if he wants to have something horrific, yeah, that's fucking horrific. If he wants to be the hero that stopped Vietnam as Wolverine too, you know, concept. So then, let's see, uh, it just gets into, he's finally in South America, like every movie does, clichely, where this is the last place of conflict, because they're savages, supposedly, so then that ends, and he's, like, sick of how savage they are, especially, so then he wants to like, see the middle of the jungle and, and feel nature or something, and so then he goes there with a guide and uh, parasites get into him or something. You know, it could be from a... I'm trying to think that right now, I'm getting this feeling it should be from some tree that looks all fallen over and dead, but then it's all actually is like those tentacle coil things that are all slimy looking of those um uh from the main movie what are those called <laughs> okay it'll come to me uh deviants yeah. yeah like kind of like that so uh sort of like it's from wherever they come from i don't know maybe just like a day. Okay, in order to clarify the Wolverine plot, a uh, few more things. It's obeying the movie principles of any South American jungle movie where people have been captured and you're rescuing them. That, like, everything's sort of mystical. Like, the parasites want him as Wolverine to go and rescue them because he's driven by passions of the human body more 
as he's integrated more into being alive because of the parasites as he survives them. Then the plot is, you know, the only people who are going to die here are the people who might have died when the cannibal freaks capture whatever village of people or whatever. And then again, when he's rescuing them, maybe somebody has to, you know, shield the rest of the people or attack some cannibals and then he dies or she dies. So there's these victims of war, not anything else and that's what i want to cover so the movie is rated r but you know it feels satisfying you know at the end of the day everybody gets rescued uh he gets his dick sucked whatever whatever happens you know i don't have to lay that out directly because that sort of stuff it's based on the people you find for the roles and the type of personalities they have it just works out you know but yes, that is the continuous cycle of humanity since the 70s. They go into graveyards, they get whatever out of bones, usually sugar. Uh, they've done it, for example, cane sugar. When that first popped up in 2012, that was really the end of humanity because it was from graveyards, from the you know sugar cane growing in a, out of graves on islands in the Pacific. So people ate that, they become cannibals, and the bacteria, parasites that are already in them from the crappy meat that they eat that's undercooked then gets out of control and wants to eat all humanity and then you have an apocalypse on your hands. So that's what the parasites in the movie are trying to express to him that he has to stop from occurring again, violently.